Hey, how's it going? We're back on Lotus. We've been away for a bit. We spent some time in the old school world, but it's time to continue the city. We also need to check in on our rocket shop because we have been slacking in terms of stocking. I don't think we're out of rockets yet, but my guess is inventory has gotten pretty low. So we got to get the rocket shop stocked up. And we also need to get this building built, which I think our next building is going to go right here. And it's going to be a tall building, but not quite skyscraper level, if that makes sense. I think this next building is going to be somewhere in the middle. Because as I've talked about in like previous episodes, I really would like the city to kind of slope up. So this will be a pretty tall building. And then obviously, as we get to this side, these buildings will be like this, this like big square here. I think it's going to be like three really really big towers or something like i haven't planned like the city building designs ahead of time so i'm kind of making them as i go so we'll see but these buildings are going to be very big and yeah that's what we need to do we're going to need a whole bunch of concrete i think we're going to go with like a gray concrete color palette and then i want to use mangrove wood to kind of highlight and accent the build and uh I'm not looking forward to it, but we're gonna have to go cut down a whole bunch of mangrove trees. That's probably gonna be the worst gathering part of this entire project, but the concrete shouldn't be too bad. I already have a whole bunch of gravel and there's a new dye shop in the shopping district. So I think getting the gray dye, we're just gonna, we're just gonna buy it. <laughs> I don't wanna make an ink sack farm or a flower farm or anything like that. I think we're just gonna spend our hard earned diamonds from the rocket shop and just buy the dye. So that's the beauty of playing on a server. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing today. Once we get the building done, if I have enough time, I'd like to go around the city and just kind of start putting in some more details. I want to put more of these trees in and things like that. And then I'd like to come up with a, a lamp post design. We'll see if I can get that figured out this episode. I'd like this area to be lit up so I can kind of hang out here in the nighttime. So more trees, lamp posts, a giant build and stocking up the rocket shop. First things first, let's head over to the trade district and restock our rocket shop and buy some gray dye. I think we're going to need a couple hundred gray dye. So. Hopefully the pricing's not too bad. I haven't actually been in the store yet. In typical Lotus fashion, it is raining. It's always, always raining. <laughs> don't look over there too much. I don't think Mefert's released his full episode yet of his giant build over there. So look forward to that as well. We've got quite the scenic view from our little starter base. Oh, spoilers over here too. I think Slip's episode will be out before mine. So I don't think I need to hide this, but he took my advice for my previous video on Lotus and he, uh, he added a more reasonable shopping experience. Look at this. We got no rain on our heads already bonus points there. He's got an ATM here so I can access my diamonds. I'll take those now in case the, uh, die shop doesn't have its own ATM. But yeah, pretty cool little shop here. He built, I love the aesthetic he's gone for here. It is. It's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. We've got moss, cobble, cobblestone brick, granite, brick. I mean, it's just a, like a nice little, very organic wind farm or windmill, I guess. I like it. And bamboo is a nice touch. I don't think of using like bamboo as greenery, but I see Slip uses it quite a bit around his builds and it does have like a nice green to it. So then we need to use more bamboo. Anyway, what were we doing? That's right, checking our stock. I know no one's bought any wind charges yet. Wind charges may have been a dud, but I'm glad that we have them because I just like playing with them. <laughs> I just think they're fun to use, so. Even if people aren't buying them, I'm glad that I have a really easy access to a whole bunch of them. All right, let's see. Very empty, very empty, very empty. Mostly empty, mostly empty. And I actually already filled up these earlier, spoiler alert. This was completely sold out and this one was half sold out, I think. So we've got quite the little split in here now between me and uh, more. It's even now, but if we do get any extra diamonds, I think we all know they're going to end up on Morg's side because, you know, he was the brains behind the build, so he deserves the extra diamond. And he can't make me keep it, so that's just how it's going to be. I got to head back over to the base, though, because I didn't bring any sugarcane with me, and we can't really make rockets without paper, so... I keep the gunpowder in my chest here because it's just in my basement, so every time I use it up, I just automatically refill it. But we do need paper for rockets. But while we're here, let's head over to the new dye shop and purchase some gray dye this thing is awesome it's like a really industrial brick greenhouse the dye depot the shopping district i must say oh beautiful rainbow 
The shopping district, I must say, is starting to fill out pretty nicely. We've got the big build for the sound museum. We've got, I think this is Luna's library over here. We got the dye depot. The uh, bookshop is upgraded now, so we can purchase our uh, enchanting books in a much nicer location, I believe this is. Oh no, this is Luna's library. Whoops. <laughs> So this is Luna's library. Oh, there it is. Luna's, this is the Lotus library, sorry. And then this is the new enchanting shop. So this is where we can now purchase all of our enchanted books. I haven't really needed to buy any in a long time, but this is a really cool build. I love the, uh, I don't know what you would call this, like a balcony wraparound area. I love it. I love builds that like utilize a second level where you can still kind of see the whole thing. Just adds a lot of like height and depth to the area. Looks like the same pricing and they even did chiseled books to really fancy the place up. All right, let's see what the damage is here for gray dye. We still need to start using more copper in our builds. We're, we're really, really slacking in the copper department. We have a trial chamber right under our base. Maybe the next build. I don't think it's going to be in this one because I don't think it'll really... I don't know. The green could look nice. Because like the gray concrete's like a little bit blue. Oops, that's a waste. So maybe you could get some copper in there. I don't know. We'll see. But I don't think so. Oh, I made me nervous. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Gray. But there it is, gray dye. So I think we need, we probably need like 250. So what is that, five stacks, I guess? It's gonna be a little bit more than we need, but one diamond per stack, that's actually kind of a steal. I'm sure they have like a flower farm or some kind of automated system, but still, I'll take it. There we go, gray dye. Now hopefully we have enough gravel and sand at our base to make the concrete, which now that I say that out loud, I should probably check. Oh, I guess I don't know how to make concrete powder. <laughs> we'll figure it out back at the base. All right, we got everything we need here. I believe that's all this new shops. Oh, I don't know if we think we've seen uh, Mafert's mud shop yet. He built the mud farm like day one on the server. I was wondering when he was finally gonna open this shop up. Everything is bought out. Check the stockpile. Oh, he's got like bulk extra storage, I guess. So you got your regular mud. Pack mud, one diamond per 32, that's probably fair. Wheat is a real pain to gather, so. There's really just no good automation for wheat other than just punching a whole bunch of wheat fields and replanting everything, so that's just kind of the way it is. We can go over here and check the uh, wind shop real quick, but I don't think anything's gonna be purchased. I've checked it the last like week or so, and I don't think there was one single, yeah. Totally stock, totally stock, totally stock. Two diamonds per 16. We could drop it down to one diamond, but honestly, everyone's just using rockets. Oh, look at that. Somebody bought a name tag. There you go. That wasn't a total waste of uh, my time. <laughs> I know five diamonds seems kind of steep for name tags, but it is such, it is like 24 emerald trade or something like that. I, or maybe 12 emeralds. It's a lot of emeralds for one name tag. And it's just such a hassle to trade back and forth and build up a stockpile of emeralds, so. I figure if someone wants to sell them for cheaper, they can open up a shop, but if someone really needs one in a pinch, they can go there and buy one. What was I doing? Oh yeah, we gotta get mangrove wood. Let's head back over to the base. I'm just gonna grab some uh, sugarcane, get this place stocked back up, and then we're gonna head over to the mangrove swamp and cut down a whole bunch of trees. Luckily, there's a pretty decent sized mangrove swamp on the uh, like northeastern corner of the uh, ocean here. So we'll head up there and just kind of deforest it. I thought about building like a tree farm or something, but I don't know. We're just not building with that much wood. And as we get more and more into like the concrete and brick and stone buildings, I think we're going to use even less wood. So for now, I think we'll just do it the old fashioned manual way, which, you know, with mangrove trees, it's pretty rough. <laughs> we do have fast decay on the server, so the leaves disappear fast. So that helps a little bit, but they're still just so unruly to cut down. Pretty unfortunate. We'll drop our gray dye off here in the base in my perfectly organized storage area. I, uh, I don't label any of these, but Slip still seems to find all the stuff he needs, so I mean, I guess there's really no reason to. All right, I got a shulker box in here that's empty. I think between that and an empty inventory, that should be plenty of space. We don't need, we need a lot of mangrove trap doors, which is unfortunate because even though it's not, gonna look like a lot of mangrove wood to make all the trap doors and stuff. We're probably gonna need a decent little stockpile, so. It's time for the first grind of the episode. We'll grab our, actually, you know what? We don't really need the hoe because the leaves have fast decay. So we really just need the ax. We're good to go. I don't think it's worth bringing the beacon. That's a little excessive. I'm off into the swamp to cut down a whole bunch of trees. I'll see you guys in a minute.
one terribly. So we're just going to do it here. <laughs> Turns out when you have that many mangrove trees all growing next to each other, uh, it gets really annoying to get the leaves to decay and disappear. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way. Get some scaffolding, put the mangroves in a little dirt spot and cut them down one by one. Let's get back to it. All right, that should be plenty of mangrove. We got all our trap doors and stuff made. Let's tear the scaffolding down, and then we need to go and get. Then we need to go get kind of a tally on how much concrete we actually have. All right, let's head over to the base and get a tally on how much concrete we actually have. I know we had a decent amount of gravel and sand, but now that I'm thinking about it, we may have used up most of it. Also, is it sand? I actually don't even remember what concrete powder is. We do have some leftover concrete powder from, uh, why did we make so much concrete powder? Oh, the lines and the roads were concrete. That's right. We made a bunch. Yeah. So we've got half a chest. That should be enough. Is it, is it sand? And I should probably know this, but here we are, you know, well, I can't make it. So that's not a good sign. What is concrete powder? Gravel, sand, color. Oh, do you have to have the color? Oh, okay. So we just need the gray dye when we make it. All right, where's the gray dye that we purchased? One of these chests, here it is. We need all of this. We've got this sand and this gravel. And then I don't know if this is vanilla or not, but we have this leftover white concrete powder. And at least on the server, we can actually re-dye concrete powder. So yeah, we can convert this straight to gray, which is kind of nice. Then we can make this gray, so we'll have five left over, but, you know, at least we didn't waste a whole bunch of it, right? So yeah, we need to go make a whole bunch of concrete powder, and then I actually built this device when I was, uh, I don't know if I showed this in an episode or not, now that I'm thinking about it. It's pretty simple. You put concrete here, so the observer sees it, right? And then you fill this thing up just with a whole bunch of concrete powder. <laughs> And then you, this step is actually waterlogged. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of hard to the shaders. So as soon as you place the concrete, it is immediately turned into, you know, hardened concrete and you mine it. And then this thing will drop you a piece every time you mine a piece because the observer will see you mine it. So you can just do like, you know, all these slots plus all your inventory. You can just crank out a whole bunch of concrete powder or concrete blocks while you're AFK. Kind of a nifty little device. I think this was the Ill Mango. I honestly don't remember, but if you just look up compact concrete farm or something like that, I'm sure you'll find whatever this design was. All right, so we need to go convert all that gravel and sand into concrete powder and then stand at this thing for a while and turn it into gray concrete. And then it's time to build in the city. I'll see you in a minute. All right, you've gathered all the materials, concrete, mangrove and and probably some other stuff <laughs> I, I, I had the weirdest moment i did all of this stuff uh oh some glass some dark oak doors you'll see don't worry a few deep sleet tile stairs for some details and then a whole bunch of concrete it's not a skyscraper but it's definitely taller than those ones it's kind of our little intermediate building so i'm pretty excited to get this one up and start getting some kind of shape to the city and then I think if we have enough time left after we build this building, I want to go through and just add more trees. I'll kind of want to add some like fences and some details in these alleyways. So let's get this building put up and then we might do a little bit of detailing around the city to just to kind of start to fill in the area and make it feel more, you know, lived in. But all right, let's place some blocks and get this thing put together. When I came over I dreamt that I was bleeding out And I woke with you inside of my mouth And questions of the why and how again Talked about and 
It's been a bit. <laughs> uh, kind of one thing after another, and time just kind of got away from me. But we're back, and look, there's a big building here now. <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't love how it turned out on the first build, so I actually went back and I added. I can remember what buttons are which. So I actually went back and added these like framing pillars. Of course, the sun's in like the worst possible position right now. But I went back and added these edge frame pieces. So originally it was supposed to be like a tiered building where each kind of thing was a slice. And I, it just, it looked cool, but it didn't look like it belonged in a city with lots of buildings, if that makes sense. I still don't know if I love the final design. It's not, I mean, it's my first crack at a skyscraper. I think I want to do more with texturing. I, I like to be like, like here is kind of like an extreme example. This is the most texturing I've probably ever done with like the granite and the coarse dirt and the dirt and the mud. But this is the other extreme where it is literally just gray concrete. I think this might even just be light gray concrete. And then obviously like the mangrove gives it a nice pop with the color, but I think I could have done more in terms of like color scaling from top to bottom that it felt kind of darker down here and brighter up there, especially when we get buildings in around and next to this thing. I worry that it's going to look really flat next to other stuff, but it was our first attempt. And this city will be kind of be a good example of us kind of learning to build in the big city style. And that's, that's not a normal door. I can't open that. It's a big empty building right now, obviously. <laughs> I don't really know what I want to do with it, honestly. I want to put some kind of farm in it. At first I was thinking, well, we have the gold farm. Maybe we should do like, like a piglin. Uh, I was picturing like a piglin bartering bank. I think, so there's been a lot of things going on just in life in general for me lately. that I just like haven't had a lot of time to focus on this, which is, you know, why this video is coming out probably weeks after the last one. Apologize for that. I haven't edited it yet, so it might be further still. Um, but I don't, I didn't have a reason for this build. Even this build, I kind of had a little bit of a story where it's like, oh, it's the neighborhood bookstore. And that's kind of enough for me. I just needed something. And for this one, it was, this is a big gray concrete tower. <laughs> and that just wasn't enough. So I think it's going to be a piglin bank. It's going to take me a little bit to get piglin bartering set up. And I don't think I'll use like all of the levels all the way up to the top, but at least for this little bit, I'm picturing like some teller stations on like this wall and this wall, and then we can put more stuff up above. I did make a little bubble elevator so you can go up floor to floor, but on this bottom level, I think it'll be a, like a fun little piglin barter in place. I don't think it's going to be automatic or some big fancy farm, but just kind of a cool place you can come throw some gold to get some materials. I think that could be interesting. And that gives this building a reason to exist. And I need to make sure for my next build, I think about that ahead of time because it, it was weird. It was almost like a lifeless build for me. There was just no reason for it to exist. And I had a really hard time with that. It just couldn't get motivated on it. I mean, I had a lot of other extenuating circumstances, but that was, I think that was a big part of like my motivation. So on the next one, we'll, we'll get that figured out. I do still want to get some of these trees planted around here. So real quickly, or, you know, quickly for you. Let's plant some trees around the city, get a little bit more life so it's not a big flat stone pathway. And then I'll check back in after I do that. I'll see you in a minute. And there it is, for now at least. We got some trees planted. I wanted to do more with the decorations and detailing around the city, but for now, this will have to do. The video still might be a little slow for the next few weeks, so bear with me. The trees definitely add a lot. I mean, at least eliminates like the really flat feeling the city had. And obviously, you know, once the buildings are here, <laughs> That'll be much better, but for now, at least this is something to kind of break up the visual line. And it's not just a mega flat super world, but here it is. Our first kind of skyscraper. We've got some decorations and a direction for how we're going to theme this building. Next episode, we'll probably try to get some piglins in here and at least get that set up. And then I think we're actually going to take a break from the city. I know it's already been a few weeks since we got this far, but... Uh, I think we're going to do something Halloween themed for our next episode. At least that's the goal. And a lot of that's going to be being built down here to the south of my base, actually, is where we kind of decided as a server to build some Halloween themed stuff. And I'm excited to get going on that. I don't really have an idea for the Halloween build yet, so I can't really give you a teaser, but I'm going to try to do something cool over there. And then hopefully everyone else's builds come together nicely and it's a cool area. But here we are. We got a big building. We got some trees. And whatever else we do this episode, I don't know. <laughs> it's been like... 
three weeks since I filmed the first segment, so I honestly barely remember what even happened, but that's all we have time for today. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Thanks for sticking around. Have a good one.